Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civilization 5. Today we're looking at Korea, the scholars of the Jade Hall. Let me tell you, Korea is quite possibly one of the greatest civilizations in the game. Definitely an S tier civ. The question is, is it the best science civ in the game? The answer is nearly. Babylon is very, very good. Korea is also great. Let's delve straight into what makes Korea one of the best science civs and one of the most synergetic defensive civilizations for going for that science victory. First up, it's Scholars of the Jade Hall. This is the Korean Empire's unique civilization ability and man it is a chonker. As Korea you will receive plus two science per specialist. Now, for those of you who don't remember or haven't seen my dedicated guide to citizen management and specialists, I would recommend you check that out, by the way, if you want to make better sense of this video. Specialists are essentially your citizens that live in your cities and work your unique buildings that have a special function. For example, a library is a science building, right? Whereas a granary is more just a generic building. It provides food. It doesn't have any specialists. However, an archaeological museum would. They would be cultural specialists, a university, scientific specialists, so on and so forth. You can see them in the citizen management screen. All of your specialists, regardless of whether, and this is important, whether they're housed in a scientific building, i.e. if they're citizens you have assigned to work your library, or if they're specialists for another building type. Let's say it's citizens who are working your market. They are gold specialists. It doesn't matter what building they work in, you'll get plus two scientists per specialist. Okay, I won't delve any more on specialists right now, do check out that video if you want to know more. But there's another important point here. In the Scholars of Jade Hall you also get plus two science on every great person tile improvement and landmark. So whenever you get a great scientist and instead of using them, instead of destroying them into the ether and getting science out of them, you can instead of course choose to build a tile improvement with them, right? For the scientists it's the academy, for the great merchants uh, you have them for great engineers, you have them for all of the great people. These tile improvements will provide plus two science, again irrespective of what their base yield would be, you'll get plus two science from them. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I feel like I should be selling you a, a treadmill that can fold up underneath your bed for easy and convenient exercise. Instead, I'm selling you the fact that every single scientific building that you build in your capital city as Korea will give you a one-off science boost equal to that of completing a research agreement with an empire that has more science than you. What this tends to mean is, each time you build one, you'll basically get a free technology. Now I'm paraphrasing it a little bit so that we don't have to fall too deep into the numbers and Mason, what do they mean? But you should generally know that every time you build a scientific building in the capital, your technology that you're currently researching, providing it has, you know, five, six, whatever turns left, will be completed. Okay, that is really, really important because it applies not only to the standard scientific buildings that you'll build hopefully in every city like a library, like a university, but it also applies to unique buildings, either national wonders or world wonders. This covers everything from the National College to the Oxford University. All of those key scientific buildings, I believe off the top of my head there are around eight of them in total if you can get them all, they all provide that one-off science boost. So you should try, when you're playing as Korea, to have a big capital city, big enough to produce and house all of these buildings. And definitely don't forget to build your national college and any scientific wonders, if you can, in your capital city. Now let's talk Korea's unique units. They're a little different, and honestly they're really strong, but tend to be more defensive. First up they have the Huacha, which replaces their trebuchet in the medieval era, unlocked of course with physics. Their trebuchet unique is really, really interesting, right? The trebuchet would normally be a siege unit. It normally has 200% bonus strength versus cities, so it does double damage to cities. However, the Huacha trebuchet loses that ability. You no longer receive your extra strength targeting cities, and your overall strength, the overall strength of the unit is reduced by 1, down from 12 to 11. However, its ranged strength, right, its attack strength, its normal range strength, receives a whopping 88% 
positive boost. That's plus 88%. It goes from 14 to 26. Guys, that is very, very strong. The unit also receives plus one sight. Uh, only if it's built from scratch, though. So do take care to build it from scratch to get your unique um, unit improvement rather than upgrading from catapults. It's definitely worth building a few from scratch. This unit lends itself towards defensive uh, purposes for the obvious reason, right? It's not good at taking down cities like its normal counterpart, but it's much stronger at fighting units. That means you can use it uh, in a domination, in an aggressive sense, don't get me wrong, but it is more tailored towards defense, right? It's not very good at taking cities, it's good at destroying units. Chances are if you're turtling up and building up a really powerful um, science base to go for that scientific victory, you're going to be using this unit to defend rather than attack like I do in this video later, just to show you how strong it really is. They also have a second unique unit. It's the turtle ship and it replaces the caravel. Kind of strange for such a scientific civilization to have two uniques. However, their base benefit, the Scholars of Jade Hall, is so strong that I don't think it matters. The turtle ship is again a defensive unit, so it replaces the caravel. It doesn't have the withdraw from melee promotion like a caravel would, which can let it escape from melee combat. It also can't enter ocean tiles, which is fundamentally the key thing about the caravel that sets it apart from the rest of the unit, right? Uh, the turtle ship can only enter ocean tiles if it's in your territory, or friendly territory, I should say. Uh, it also loses uh, some sight. It's got two sight, down from three. What you can see is the turtle ship is clearly, unlike the caravel, not a unit built for exploration. In fact, anything but. So what does it actually get? Well, it receives a whopping 80% boost to its strength. Much like the trebuchet, it goes up from 20 strength to 36. This makes it much more of a powerhouse, especially in comparison to the very weak caravel that it replaces. It also becomes obsolete much later. Uh, it doesn't become obsolete until you research replaceable parts. That's in comparison to normal, where it will be obsolete at steam power. So the turtle ship will stick around. Again, I think it's called the turtle ship for good reason. It can't travel through open ocean, it has much less sight, but man does it hit hard. This thing is clearly a defensive naval unit. You can also use it on the aggression, but because it doesn't have a ranged attack, it can't fight cities, it's again less useful for being truly aggressive and dominating your opponents, and much better for either skirmish conflict versus units, or again defensive conflict. The strategy then for Korea seems fairly straightforward, but there are a few nuances that I'm going to cover here at the end of the video. Uh, for starters, Korea starts with a coastal start bias. That's largely because of your unique unit, the turtle ship. One thing to bear in mind with a coastal start is that it tends to be worse. You tend to have worse tiles, particularly in terms of production. I mean, look at the map here. You can see that the ocean tiles uh, by themselves are really just providing food, right? Uh, you can get production from them, of course, with um, improving resources like those fish. You can get um, certain pantheons, for example, that provide more production from fishing boats and buildings, so on. But by and large, your sea tiles aren't going to be very productive. For that reason, I recommend if you can, you try and settle your capital somewhere where there's lots of productive tiles. You see, I've done it here with the marble. I actually moved away from the coastline to settle inland to get a really productive city. You, of course, will want to have a coastal city, but you can explore that later with your second or third. Also important to bear in mind that if you want to build the observatory, a scientific building that provides plus 50% science within that city, you need to build your city next to a mountain. That's what I did with my second city, but there's also an argument to be made for doing it with your first one, Again, just make sure that you've got enough production within your lands so that you don't fall too far behind. Because having a large, growing, productive capital city that is happy and fulfilled is really important for Korea because you want to try and get as many scientific buildings as you can in that capital. That leads me to quickly talking about social policies. I think the tree for Korea is very straightforward. Tradition into exploration into rationalism. This capitalizes on your science. Exploration allows you to buff your coastal cities a little bit, that first card particularly important for plus three production, and of course we pick tradition because we're trying to grow tall and strong. Overall, Korea is a very defensive, strong, and scientific civ. They are absolutely 
absolutely well geared for a scientific victory, but really because they're so strong at science and they have some reasonable units, you can almost pursue any victory you'd like, coupled by a very strong scientific output. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.